up welcome back to the channel mode ij and we are locked in this is episode three of power book four of force and we've seen that tommy is in the city now him and diamond they're running around they're making some plays we also seen him run into an old friend from original power lillian now at the end of the episode we seen tommy kicking her door because he was trying to kill her he didn't know what she was exactly in chicago for but he didn't kill her. Instead, he found some bricks in the floor, and that's where we pick up this week. Before we get into this episode, shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel and you want to be a part of it, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. We're going to see what Tommy is about to do with her. Are they going to work together, or is he going to have to get rid of her? My prediction is they work together. Neither one of them have a solid connection in Chicago, so why not get money with somebody you know that was very well reliable and... We know that she didn't snitch. So let's jump into it. This is Power Book 4, Episode 3. Tommy's in her house and he's talking to her. Now he discovered these bricks and he decided to keep her alive. Now what he's saying is, look, you got 10 bricks in here and they're going for about 30 grand a piece on the street. Whoever you're working for or whoever you took these from, they're not going to walk away from $300,000 in the streets. Now I did mention that the bricks were going between 30 and 50. Tommy is saying they're 30 on the streets of Chicago. And what he tells her is, look, we can either try to kill each other, scratch that, scratch that. I can either kill you or you work with me. And of course, when you have that option of surviving or working with somebody, she says, I'm always on the side of money. Now, we know we got 10 keys. We know Tommy has just bought a little fire station. So, well, it's time to get to work. Pick up them bricks and let's get to it. Mr. Vic, he shows up to the police department and he's here to see a couple of people. Now the lady behind the register, she's talking about that'd be 9,500. Now he pulls out a bankroll. She's telling him it's gonna be $9,500 and you'll have to wait over there while she gets everything together. Well, he takes that 9,500 and gives it to her and then he puts an the extra 500 down for, you know, whatever the sports league needs to do at the police department, AKA take this money shh, and get this job done. Now you remember Simon, he been getting whooped on. Well, Vic had to bail them out. And he getting out talking about, man, they, they got me in here. He's like, hey, bro, you can't be saying all that in this police station. Let's get on out of here, yo goofy ass. Come on, Simon. Sheriff Bennigan. Now, we knew when he came in there with that jacked up hairline, harassing Diamond, he wasn't a legit cop. He either was a cop that did his job too well or he's crooked. And it seems like he's working with the Flynn family because Vic comes over. He's like, why are y'all arresting my men? My family has a pass. That's what I'm paying you for. Now, Bennigan is saying, I'm doing everything I can, but what went down was above my pay grade. So we need to see what's really going on with Bennigan and how deep is he in with the Flynn family that Vic goes directly to him after bailing out his people. Tommy takes Liliana back to the house because we got to bust these bricks down and get them out on the street. Now, she comes out and Liliana, I'm talking about mm -hmm, looking more like Tatiana, but she gets down to her drawers. She just has on a tank top and her underwear because you don't want to get none of this on you. Now, she's showing Tommy how to break down a brick and he's looking at it like, dang, if we knew you were this nice, we would have had you working for us instead of just being a courier. Now, she's talking about you, you and Ghost, Ghost coming down to get in on this. And he's like, nah, Ghost is dead. I couldn't stop it, but he's dead. But scratch all that. Ghost is dead. We've known that for years. But now we got to talk about, all right, when we start cutting this, she's talking about it will be untraceable. So people will think that it's still pure. Tommy says we're going to split it 70-30. She said 50-50. Tommy looks at her. All right, 50-50. Now she's just being annoying. Why are you helping me, Tommy? He's like, hey, forget all that. That's in the past. We cooking up now. So he pours her up a drink and she's talking about to ghost. He looks at her. Well, hey, to ghost, new beginnings. Tommy goes to meet up with his brother JP because he wants to know about his grandma and who's actually paying for her to be in there. Now we know nobody's really went to see Miriam in over six years and it's just JP. But he's saying if you want to find out more information, we could go talk to Kate, our mom. Now Tommy has already told JP, nah, mom is dead to me. I'm not going back and talking to that B. Now over on the wall, they see a little measuring chart you know you can see how tall you are but neither one of them were at the house at the same time so they didn't know about each other what we do discover is that our man jp is in tremendous amount of debt he needs one hundred ninety six thousand dollars. now tommy has been giving him money and he's like i can't take it tommy i can't take it man it just doesn't feel right and tommy's like man i was in nightclubs i had laundry mats 
me and my business partner, we split it right down the middle, AKA James. Now he doesn't say that James is dead. He just said he went down South, but he's already lying to JP because he didn't have any ownership of the club. And <laughs> he didn't do parking lots. Now, Tommy says everyone has a price and he wants to help his brother out. Now he says he needs $196,000 and like 203. Tommy's like, damn, that's a lot of money. Now, there's no way we're going to be able to get this money legitly is what Tommy is thinking in his head. And second thing he's thinking is, how the hell did you get in debt $196,000? You might need to sell that bar that keeps getting shot up. It's been three times. Replacing those windows are at least $1,100, $1,200 a piece. Come on now. Diamond and Jannar, they're catching back up. We know that Diamond has got out of jail. We've seen his brother's kidnapped. That's why you see the eyes messed up and everything. And they're talking about the baseball field that they have and redoing it. This is because Jannar, he wants to give back to the community so the little black kids can have the same opportunity that the white kids have. Now, these two brothers, they like playing baseball. So they got them some beer. They about to go out there and hit a few. Now, you hear Jannar talking about baseball and how good it was. But Diamond said, man, I ain't. I ain't get to watch that while I'm in here. So at least we see that Jannar, he's in the streets, but he's still giving back to the community. He has a plan to give the kids something that they can use and get out of the streets. Tommy's making moves. We see our girl, she's sitting down talking about, I just sat down, he's talking about, get up, we gotta get back to work. Now she's asking, what does he know about the Flynn family? He's saying, man, I've been to their house, it's a little over the top, AKA these people are crazy and they got some bread. Now she's talking about, do you got anything, coffee or something so I can, you know, wake up, have a little kick so I can get to work. He's like, look around. I just moved in this thing last night and came and kicked in your door at the same time. So what do they do? They got to test the product. Now Liliana, she's been here longer than Tommy. So she's trying to explain up north, you got the whites, the Flynn's run that. And down south, everyone's really not on the same page. A lot of the crews are broke. Now CBI, they run the, the south for the most part. Now she used to work with cbi and she used to cut for them but she said Jannard was trying to smash the whole time and he also owes her eight thousand dollars Jannard and vic they always owing somebody some money but tommy's like i'm not from here so i can cross those lines but the flins they don't know i'm here so i have to stay under the radar and as long as he can get the cbi crew diamond and his people on board that'll at least be a way to start generating a little bit of money especially with 10 keys the thing about brotherly love it can go from being a happy moment to arguing to back to being happy all in the snapping of a finger. Now they're out here and Jannar wants to know is Diamond gonna be messing with that white boy, AKA Casper, AKA Tommy Egan. And he's saying, why, what does it matter? He helped me get you out of the jam. Now, of course, Jannar's hearing this and we seen that it looked like it was a power struggle in between Jannar showing all of his boys, the young dudes, that he still runs things and Diamond isn't calling the shots. So he's saying, look, I earned this spot. I'm not your little brother anymore, Diamond. I'm not just happy to be around. I put CBI on, I made us relevant. Diamond is saying, I know this isn't the old days. The old me, yeah, I would've popped Tommy. When all this started happening, it wouldn't have been no talking, but he's changed and he's also seeing that, hey, Tommy, we may not know him, but as of right now, he showed his loyalty to us. Jannar doesn't like this because he sees his brother getting closer to Tommy. So he gets mad and throws the ball at him. Now, I predicted that he would have a little beef with Tommy over all of this, but you can't really be mad at your brother for messing with Tommy when they saved you. And the whole time the brothers is out there arguing, Sheriff Bennigan, the lame cop that we found out is working with the Flynn family, was recording them. Now we knew when we first seen him that he was gonna be giving Diamond a hard time, and now we see that he's following them and tracking everything that he's doing. Now we heard that the Flynn's run the North, CBI, they run the South. So this could be him going back to Vic, like, hey, you need to watch them, they making moves. The Flynn family have their little weekly meeting and they're talking about what they're gonna do because Simon and people are still getting locked up even though they're paying Bennigan. Now you hear Walter and he says, as long as the feds aren't building the case on us, we are good. Now Claudia, she does the books and we see that she might be the one that's actually smart enough to run this organization. She says, our profits are down. What, what are we gonna do about this dad? And he's like, <coughs> cause we know his ass is sick. Him being sick, he still has the same response to Claudia. Don't worry about that. The money will come back to where it needs to be. But I need you to go talk to an alderman and tell him to stop these shakedowns. Now you hear Vic saying, we can't go directly to him. We got to play it a little bit different. Now he's telling Claudia to go do it and wear something to stimulate his mind. Now the alderman, 
he's pretty much going to be the one that can directly talk to the police station and try to have them hey man we need to stop doing these shakedowns don't do this i'll get you guys some more funding we'll do fundraisers for the police station like that and walter is saying claudia i need you to do this gloria goes to visit her mother's grave site and when she gets there she sees there's a new tombstone on there a nice one now vic he shows up and he's the one that actually bought it but then he runs his mouth and says i seen you with him and she's saying oh so you did this because you're jealous stop trying to buy me and defend me this isn't buying you you just accepted it if he didn't say anything about tommy you saying this tombstone would have bought you is that what you're saying so that logic is all out the window but he's like I did this because, you know, I wanted to do something nice for you. And she's talking about stand up for me. What what exactly is he going to do to stand up for you? He's trying to talk to you, but you keep pushing him away. Tommy is going to meet up with Walter. Now we see Walter and his brother-in-law, Paulie. Paulie's talking about, let's take him out right now. He doesn't want to do no more talking with this guy, Tommy. Walter said, no, nah, that'd be rude. Let's see what he got to say. I got a little bit of respect for Paulie. We know he's about business. Hey, Tommy, could you move your car? We on a schedule. Now he's over here and he's talking to our girl and he's basically flirting with her. How you mess up your face? Shaving accident, what's your excuse? So he's hearing all this. He's like, mm, feisty. You wanna go out for dinner? She talking about all you gotta do is shave your mustache and we can talk about it. I would've turned around, came back like, so what time is that dinner? <laughs> Tommy and Walter, they go off and they do a little bit of talking. Now. Tommy is, he's, you know, here to try to be able to move these things. But Walter is saying, we move pills. I don't deal with none of that. And if I was going to get into Coke, I'd go get it from the CBI boys. They make better partners. But Tommy calls him out and says, you wouldn't run with no black crew. Plus, you don't know the difference between BLM and BET. I was like, <laughs> Walter definitely doesn't even know what BET is. But Tommy is saying, I came, I stumbled up on some things. We could probably make it happen. Walter tells Tommy, I'm not used to people not doing what I tell them. He said, good thing I'm not your people. But he's coming to the realization that Tommy might actually know what he's talking about. And if he has an opportunity for us to make some money, because we just heard our profits are down in the Flynn family. So he's saying, I'm listening. Tommy might be able to give him five, give CBI five, or give him like three just as starters, you know what I'm saying? See what he do, hold two for himself, give five to CBI, see what they can move. Who knows? Tommy catches up with Vic and he's talking to him about, hey, we got some product to move. Now, we know Vic and Tommy, they aren't they aren't the best of friends, but Vic even admits that when it comes to money, I don't care who I work with. And Tommy was asking him, all right, well, why were you making deals behind your dad's back and you running with the black crews? Because Vic doesn't have a problem with him. We've seen him out with Jannard. He's like, first of all, Tommy, stop calling me son. I'm working and doing my own thing. But if you put the Flynn name on that Coke, we can make something happen you know what i'm saying new new revenue stream so tommy's like all right well let's get this money so vic they put their differences aside because when it comes to getting money it don't matter black white green is the only thing we see vic takes tommy to meet this guy colin and he's in here jamming out no shirt on you got a girl with no shirt on she talking about let me call the police tommy said nah look, look i'm gonna get you up out of here but Colin said, ain't nobody leaving. He pulls a gun. He's talking about Tommy's eye him. Talking about, man, who is this guy? You don't ever want to be around someone like this. Crazy and shaking with a gun. Probably on drugs. You got to be very, very careful. Because that hands on that trick. And it can easily, pow. What I tell you? You can't trust anybody like this. Everybody pulls a gun on each other. Vic takes Colin down. Tommy got his gun. He got Fat Tony. Fat Tony was on keto because he's not even fat no more. He all in shape. Tommy talking about it's a bad day, ain't it? Fat Tony came to the realization that your life is not worth whatever the hell you got going on being security here. He starts telling everything. The freight elevator goes straight down to the alley. It can hold up to 2,000 pounds. Calling on the ground like, are you kidding me? You just telling them everything? Tony said, I got kids. I got four of them. He gave that gun to Tommy so quick. Uh, lady, let's get on out of here. Smart decision, Tony, because Tommy does not play. You got this paint back here, it'd be bloody messing around with Tommy. And what I just tell you, these paintings will have a little bit of blood on them messing around with Tommy. Now, he tosses a pillow to Vic and says, wait, 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 now paint the walls. Basically, what he wanted to do is put the gun over his face, shoot through the gun so it'll muffle the sound. Because they got the music and stuff on, so boom, you're not going to hear the gunshot, and then we can get on out of here. Tommy and Vic go back to Walter's house, and Walter is, how can I put it? upset 
irate because his son couldn't handle one little transaction. But Tommy's like, hey, Colin was a little out of line. So what, <laughs> what Vic is telling his dad is, look, I can go take this, this product and move it outside of the city. Walter's saying, you can't even move product in the city. What luck do you think you're going to have out there? Pretty much shutting down everything that Vic has in his head, which is going to have him start to look at Tommy and think, maybe I could work with you. But Walter, he wants to call Colin. Tommy said, I, um, I don't think he's going to answer. Nothing is going in the favor of what Walter wanted. So he tells Tommy, look, if you can bring Samson to the table, talking about Diamond, then we got a deal. One time deal. We moved this little coke, but you remember he said he'd only partner with CBI. So it's up to Tommy to convince Diamond to get in on this deal so they all three can work together, the Flynn, CBI, and Tommy. Tommy shows up to the boxing ring. We see Diamond just getting some light jabs in. <laughs> Tommy's reading off, oh, best hand-eye coordination in Chicago, and then he tells him what his boxing coach used to tell him. Stay out the corner, stay off the rope. AKA, don't be boxed into this little thing. You need to get out in that ring. You need to explore. And he's talking to Diamond about a business proposition. But of course, Gennard is saying, oh, no, man, we we ain't doing that, man. No, man, it ain't like that out here. And Diamond's also saying, I ain't never been no white man's nigga. AKA, we ain't never worked with the Flins before. Why would we start working with them now? And like I was mentioning at the park, that little power struggle, we're starting to see it from Gennard, especially because his brother, Diamond, who is the original founder of CBI, Gennard doesn't want him calling shots. Everything that goes through CBI has to go through me also. Because Diamond said, if Flynn is down, let's make it happen. But Gennard, he doesn't want to work with Tommy. And he doesn't want Diamond calling the shots. So he kind of pushes him a little bit in front of everybody. Hey, the only way that Diamond's going to get that top spot back, he got to get in the ring with our boy Gennard. And he's trying to tell him, hey, Gennard, ain't no coming back from this. Now, Gennard, rule number one, don't get in that ring in socks. You're going to be sliding all around. Diamond already got you by a little bit of weight, so you need to be able to move in that thing. But as soon as he gets in, Gennard catches Diamond, and it is on. You see Tommy out there grinning. This is what he want to see, some action. Tommy and Elijah, Tommy talking about who you got, who, who you got money on. He said, always bet on the little guy. Tommy said, well, shoot, they both bigger than me, so... I got $500 on diamond. I would have been back there like, hey, yeah, I got a, I got a hundred, 150. We could do two. I do two. I do two on diamond. <laughs> I'm talking about they in there legit throwing them things. Bing, bing. One minute you think Jannard went in, then he told diamond in the corner. Diamond switches up. He hitting them. Jannard head button them. This is a street fight, people. This is for that top spot. All is fair. No weapons, just throwing hands. You get in that ring. Hey, all is fair. But when you drop them, you don't stomp them. That's disrespect. So whoever gets dropped, that's when it's over or whoever gives up. You hear Elijah talk about let them legs fly. Jannard been, hey, he been practicing. He kicked him in the back of that damn leg. Diamond's like, oh, shit. But that ain't enough to stop this big boy. I'm talking about, look at him. Look how he got Jannard in that corner. He, bow, lined him up. The dude with the do-rag down here looking like, damn, Jannard, you shouldn't have gotten that ring. Diamond is not playing. You see these posters with, his, um, <laughs> with him up there? He is the best in Chicago before he got locked up. I'm talking about Diamond Finish, this young boy. Now, I give him credit. He got in there, and he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with his brother. Now, did we expect him to win? No. But what he did show everybody is I got heart to get in there. Diamond is a big boy. But I stood up to him. I wanted that top spot. Unfortunately, I don't have it. Good thing that's my brother, and he's not going to finish him. But, I mean, it was a good fight. Hey, yo, Diamond, now that you got the juice back, what about that meeting with the Flins? Diamond talking about set it up. Now, even Jannard, it's respectable. You got to respect him for that. He looked at Diamond and he told him, you got the top seat. You got to take that ass whooping. It's just a part of the game. Claudia goes to meet with the Alderman. And the reason that they're doing this is because they're getting people jammed up. And they've been paying this guy. Now, he's talking about, Claudia, take your time. Let's drink this wine. Mm. You taste that citrus? Mm. Oh. And she's like, look, quit the BS. How much money do you need? Because there's other people in other districts that we can go to and we can give them money. And he's saying the money that y'all giving me is the only reason y'all not going to jail. And I thought we could end this meeting with us. Uh, mm hmm. Because we got a lot in common. You know what I'm telling? We both like to eat that round. And she's like, look, quit, <laughs> quit the BS. I know where your daughter goes to school and I would hate to get dirt on her uniform. He sees that picture. He's like, oh, 
you know what we're good the money you guys are sending me that that's good i'll i'll accept that each month yeah i'll i'll, I'll get back on my job yeah when you get threatened like that and you know they know where your kids are it'll straighten you up you see how quick fat tony gave that gun to tommy this ain't even no gun this is just a threat on your kid this could be a picture they pulled offline your way is all scary and stuff he said the number will stay the same and before she walks off she talks a little trash even if i gave you a menu and a map you wouldn't know how to eat that i would look at her like now i'll show you what to do with it give me a chance <laughs> he got that check though liliana at the house she talking about man this is taking too long let me let me move the dope tommy let me move it he like hell no nah. you might run off with it and plus whose dope is this you ain't i don't think you told me the truth and she's trying to say yeah i did tell the truth but she has a way that she can move it and tommy is saying nah matter of fact let me buy you out your half she don't want to do that she want to put it in the streets because she knows she can just step on a little more and you can make it stretch a little bit further than trying to sell 10 holes the math adds up people trust me but Tommy tells her, I'll call you when I need you. Get the hell out of my spot. The meetup is set. Dr. Parker's office. It's time to make moves. We got to meet up with Walter. We got to meet up with Diamond and the new head of CBI. We got to try to get some of this work in the streets. Dr. Parker's office is the, the bar that Gloria works at. Now we see the Flins. They're already there. Tommy shows up first and then comes Diamond. It's time to get to business. Tommy comes in here and he lays down exactly what's going to happen. Diamond, they're going to be able to move their work up north in the Flynn territory. The Flynn's, they're going to be allowed to move their work down south. Now, each person, they will get a 10% kickback. So anything that Flynn sells, Diamond will get 10% of and vice versa in the north. Now, Tommy, his cut will be 5% on both sides from every single transaction. So Tommy's going to make a pretty little penny by not doing anything, by just setting up this meeting. But he's the one that actually has the Coke. So I'm pretty sure that Diamond and them will have to buy it from him and then he'll get a 5% cut on anything sold. So it's a win-win for Tommy. Of course, everyone's going to be hesitant, mainly on the Flynn side. Now we get a little backstory. Because the reason they don't really trust CBI and they don't really want to work with Black Cruz is because he thinks that CBI, primarily Diamond, rolled up on Paulie and his wife and she got a face full of glass and had to get stitches. Diamond is saying we didn't do that. So that's why Flynn and them are hesitant on working with the Blacks because they think that they attacked them. Now Tommy is saying, hey, we got to quit this white versus black bull. Let's get some money. So let's get back on topic about how we getting this 15% to go between everybody. This whole conversation went totally left. We don't even have a deal anymore. Now we find out that Flynn killed nine of Walter's people when he didn't even have anything to do with it. So he ends up storming out and you hear Tommy, what the fuck are y'all doing? Oh my goodness, the Flynn, y'all just ruined something. Tommy needed that money. He didn't really had to do too much work, but he needed that money. And it would have been a good opportunity for both sides, CBI and the Flynn's. The younger people, they see what's going on. They like, man, we can come together and get this money. Walter said, don't matter. We are Flynn's. We do what we want. You even see Vic like, dad, that was our fucking opportunity. Tommy walks out like, Walter, you just blew this chance of a lifetime for everyone to be getting money. Even Vic leaves. Walter's sticking to If the Greeks and the Italians find out that we in bed with the Negroes, they're going to isolate us. Vic is saying if we don't work with them, we gonna become extinct. We gotta have new streams of revenue. Gloria's showing up for her shift at the Dr. Parker bar and grill or bar, whatever you wanna call it. And she looks at Tommy and she sees him coming out when Vic and them were there and she says, I guess I didn't have to ask what you do for work. Uh, I should be asking you what you do. You got Vic and them coming in here, having security. What do you do? They just had a mafia meeting in your bar. What do you do? You worried about Tommy? I'm just smoking a cigarette. <laughs> It's kind of move when the eyes is on you. The feds is watching. They taking pictures from down the street. They want to know who's involved with the Flynn's. Wait a minute. We had Diamond from CBI in there. We got some random white guy. We had the Flynn family. Hmm. Interesting. He talk about, let me see the new face. Tommy is now officially on the watch list. We don't know who he is, but we got pictures of him. Tommy looks in his side mirror. So I don't know if he can see the feds because he knows what to look for. He's been into it with the feds for six whole seasons. But he speeds off because if he is, we might have to shake this Mustang. 
but you should have known going into a meeting like this with the Flynn's being such high profile people and Diamond, you should be going out the back door. Y'all should never be leaving at the same time. That's a easy, easy thing you could have corrected. Claudia was waiting on Tommy to lead a spot. We see the G-Wagon follow him after he peels off. Now, this is where she cuts him off, and we see Tommy grab that gun because he doesn't know what's going on. And the last time someone cut him off, Polly and the Goonies, they had all them guns on them. Now, she pulls Tommy over, and she's saying, I got something new for you in these streets that you could use, some product, because she knows that meeting with her father just went bad. Now, she's telling Tommy, if you stick around, you'll find out what new drug I have because you're about to become obsolete. Of course, after Tommy moves these 10 things, then what? Well, right now we can't even move those 10 because the Flynn's, they aren't cooperating. So he's asking her, is this an invitation to stick around? She's like, yeah, it is. So Tommy be ready. Opportunity knocks, you gotta answer it. Elijah comes and meets up with our boy, Jannar. Now we've seen him get beat in the ring, but if you listen closely to the conversation they're having, he said, Diamond thought he really whooped on you. Jannar lost this fight, and Elijah saying, since you did this, it's going to split CBI down the middle. Jannar said, I'm not worried about that. In the long run, everyone's going to come to me. Now, I don't know what he's going to do. Hopefully, he isn't going to backstab his brother or do anything silly like that and try to kill him because that's his brother. But that power can get to somebody's head, so we're going to have to watch this separation between Jannar from his big brother, Diamond. Miss Claudia, she's in the bed, and... She's talking to her little Asian thing and she's talking about the chemical compounds and this diet pill was a little similar to cocaina. So that's what they're using. You know what I'm saying? When you get a chemical compound that's somewhat similar, you can easily replace one or two molecules with something else and just throw it off and you can turn it into a synthetic drug, which is what they have. Now the girl is saying, all we need is your parents, you know, the Flynn family to put their name on this. Claudia said, there's no Flynn family. It's you and me. Claudia is about to make some things happen and that's why she wanted to connect with Tommy because that meeting didn't work. So Tommy, I got something else to put in these streets. We know the spider, Tommy has the card and we know it signifies the cartel. Is this a connection to New York? We don't know yet, but Tommy's holding on to it. And then he gets a text message from Gloria. She's asking Tommy, is he up? Always. Won't company? Always. Nothing better than getting that text message in the middle of the night. What you doing? Uh, I ain't doing nothing, just on YouTube. You want company? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Claudia comes over and let me... Gloria knew exactly what she was doing. She came over. No more talking, no more questions, no more answers. Let's just get it in. I'm talking about Tommy had her on the window. Mm, mm, mm. There you go, episode three of Power Book 4. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that Tommy and CBI are going to be able to put something together, especially with Jannard? having a plan behind his brother's back. And what do you think is going to come out of Claudia trying to work with Tommy? Let me know what you guys think. I'm Mode IJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you tune in 9 p.m. Eastern Sunday night for the live after show discussion of Power Book 4, Episode 3. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.